I'm going to talk to you guys about wiring. Uh, I was looking at stuff on uh, YouTube to see what's out there and it seems like they, a lot of guys that had decent videos on it wanted to sell you a video and uh, I think free is a little more interesting to me um, especially when there's such a thing called monetization on YouTube and you can put your ads on there and get paid pennies which I get paid pennies to do this uh, but I'm looking at it long term uh, eventually I'm gonna retire and uh, from doing my job and I don't really have anything saved because I can't save anything uh, I think that everybody's kind of there so make some videos and monetize them put them on YouTube uh, you don't need to charge people for for stuff when you can make money for doing nothing once you've done it um, so anyway I'm going to show you guys some of the basic things. Uh, what I've done for years is I've always had a wiring diagram, followed the wiring diagram pin to pin on everything, and I've gotten to memorize a lot of the uh, wires over the years. And some guys I know are so, they've done it so many times, they've actually memorized every single wire, the color of it, and they don't even need to look at a a diagram anymore but I'm not that way um, so on the internet you can go to vintagebus.com or search under Google VW wiring diagram and you'll find a link to uh, vintage bus you'll find a nice wiring diagram for every year every model worldwide for your wiring and uh, they're pretty simple to follow the thing that VW has is on every single uh, place where you place a wire, there's a number on this at the switch. For instance, I don't know if we can even see it, but we're going to try. Oh boy, my light's dying on me. But anyway, um, on the switch, on the switch here, there's numbers for each wire as well as the color of the wire. Um, if your original wiring harness is too shot and the colors are all gone, try using paint stripper. Um, very carefully do a small section. Um, don't get the real harsh paint stripper. Get the real mild stuff. Like don't use the citrus one either. I don't, I don't know anything about that one. But I use like um, the cheaper paint stripper <clears throat> and use that to strip the the uh, paint off your wires, of course, tuck something underneath to protect your finish if you're unpainted. Um, but I'm going to kind of run through these here. Most VWs are the same, except for um, older than, I believe, 61. 60 was the four fuse, okay? And those are really simple. Um, so uh, I think you can probably figure that one out. There's one switched power. There's one... Um, uh, one power on all the time and then I think the rest are just your lights so it's really simple uh, you can't go wrong on that one but here's how this goes this one on the passenger side is switched power then you have your tail lights I don't know if it's left or right you can kind of figure that it doesn't really really matter too much left and right tail light you have your the the yellow wire is your low beam the two white wires is your high beam and then you'll have your little high beam wire uh, that goes up to your uh, light on the dash on the other side and then you'll have here your uh, power on all the time yeah that should be it power on all the time so hot all the time is over here on the other side and I believe the buses are pretty much the same um, so they follow the same type of a pattern it might be opposite but it kind of gives you the idea of how it works okay and if you go to vintage bus You'll get your wiring diagram when you. And one of the things I found 
is if you look at just the fuses alone, um, it will appear to be upside down. So just so you know that um, when you look at that, if you're looking at the fuses alone portion, it, it appears to be upside down. So it's easier to use the entire wiring diagram to wire your car. So um, some of the things that are pretty simple in a VW is what there is is on the switch power. So this one here, yeah, actually this side switch power. This side's hot all the time. Sorry, back that up. This side's hot all the time. This side's switch power. So on your switch power, you're going to have a lead that goes from here to your speedometer, um, the bottom of your speedometer. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't. But the bottom of your speedometer, and then you have your three lights, indicator lights above that. Okay, the middle one being, of course, your turn signals, and the right and left are your... Um, the green light would be your uh, oil and the red light being your uh, uh, generator. So that's how the underhood wiring goes. If you happen to buy a car and it has no wiring in it, it's already been pulled out, um, you'll need to take a lead and, and run it up through this hole here and actually pull your new har harness in um, actually, you know, you put it up this way because you have to put it up this way and then you have to hook on to your new wiring harness and pull it up all the way over to the, if you have an older car, all the way over the, um, the wiring actually goes up through this channel in here and then goes down and comes out here on the early cars and the later cars, it actually goes down here through the floor, along the side of the heater channel, back through the quarter panel and back up. You can see a couple other videos on that that you can figure that out. Um, but uh, I would highly recommend if you don't have any wiring, not to try and wire it with just plain wires. Spend the $300 and get the wiring harness or whatever they cost um, from Wolfsburg West. and. Uh, just pull a, pull a new wiring harness because it has the nice colored wires that match and then if you ever have a problem someday it's so much easier to look at those colors and refigure it out um, because it's already loomed and everything exactly as they are originally done and the colors are right so if you ever have a problem you can easily figure it out with that wiring diagram so anyway um, but if you follow those pin numbers and the colors that are on there um, I always make sure I have a lot of light when I do it because having a lot of light um, helps to determine the right color um, it's just too easy to get them wrong yeah you know because uh, the colors are kind of old and faded like this one here's purple and I can't see purple in that very well but it's purple it's got a purple and black um, and because I, I you know like I said I'm colorblind so it's not very easy for me to do wiring that's one of the things I can't see very well inks I don't see very well for some reason paint I can see pretty good but anyway uh, that's the basic things of the wiring remember your power leads are on either side you know you have your hot light lead on this side and your switch lead on the other and that's usually how it is uh, in fact uh, but on the early ones I think it's like switched and power right next to each other and then the rest of them are um, on the four fuse system you know, the rest of them are the other but I, I'm not sure I haven't had one of those cars in many years I had a 50 58 pug wiring harness in my other bug many years ago uh, I had a 62 bug and then I had a 58 body that I put on it one of these days I'll dig that photo out I have a photo of it still um, uh, it was orange, and um, I still have a photo of it, but it's no big deal. Be, oh, don't you wish you still had your first car? I go, no, not really, because <laughs> I butchered that car up pretty good. I mean, I I remember I, I, had a, I didn't have the right gas tank for it, and I wanted a gas gauge, and I remember I cut that freaking front of that car out, the 58, 
put an early late model gas tank in it because that's what I wanted, you know, at the time. I wanted a gas gauge. It, nobody cared back then. It wasn't really worth anything. So, um, and plus, it was not a number match because I had a 58 body on the 62 pan. The 58 pan that it was on it, um, I think they turned it into a dune buggy, so it, it was gone. But it was a super straight 58 body that I got. It was from this old man. He, he had it in his yard. And he saw me working on my bug and working on my bug, and he says, Hey, I got something I want to show you. <laughs> I went to his backyard, and he says, Hey, I got this. Oh, I was like, Whoa. And he goes, Well, I said, Man, how much do you want for that? He says, well, do you want it? I said, yeah, I'd love to have it. And he goes, why don't you just take it? <laughs> so that was pretty cool. I ended up getting that that uh, 58 body from my other one because it was really rusted. And uh, it wasn't that bad to me today. I would just like totally fix that 62 body. It wasn't that bad. But I thought it was really bad because it just, it looked as, probably as bad as this car did. <laughs> Imagine that. And I just wanted to get rid of it. I did all that work, changed the body out. And uh, anyway. And then ended up with uh, wiring changing, going to the early with late. And I had all kinds of mixed up stuff. And I made it all work. But because you, you could use all these same color wires that are already there. And most of them, even in the early and the late model, were the same colors so um, this will take you all the way up to the late model the only big difference is um, is the the turn signal and uh, relay switches or the uh, what's it called four-way flasher setup and I have a if you're interested um, look on search on the Samba the Samba.com and you'll find a wiring uh, I actually made a wiring uh, diagram to make your own one of those four-way flashers and you can put that on any car you could take so eventually I'm going to put four-way flashers on this car because if I'm climbing a hill I want to push a button and let everybody know that I'm going slow so don't run me over so those are things you might want to do when you get your project done all right we'll talk more about some other things I'm working on the horn right now on this and then uh, trying to get my wire ran up the steering column but nothing seems to fit in that stupid little hole all right i'll talk to you later